Howdy everyone, and welcome to part 4 of the Understanding New of M series. In the last episode we restructured our configuration slightly, we split it up into many different files, and we also made sure our configuration is more stable, and all of that was setting up for this occasion right here. We are going to install NVIM TreeSitter, which is going to activate TreeSitter support within NeoVim, and we're going to reap all of the benefits that TreeSitter gives us. But this wouldn't be an understanding NeoVim episode if I didn't actually explain what TreeSitter was. Now for the record, when it came out, and when we all found out that we are going to be getting support directly within NeoVim, but TreeSitter passes, everybody went crazy. You started seeing many different plugins utilizing it, and users were happy because they had better syntax highlighting, indenting, and developers were happy because they were able to actually write useful code for once that could operate on code instead of text. But all of that is meaningless to you if you don't understand what TreeSitter really is. To this day, there are a ton of misconceptions about what it actually does. Users usually think it's just a better syntax highlighting engine, but that is completely not true. So the way I like to to think of it is somewhat like a platform that you can develop for. So Trista is this unified interface where many people can build their own parsers and those parsers are going to run anywhere in any application which has the Treesitter core in it. Every single programming language or markup language has its own syntax rules. It has its own grammar, its own semantics, different behaviors, different looks. Now naturally what that means is that in order to successfully pass a specific language, you need a parser for that language. You can't create a generic parser for everything. Now the job of each individual parser is to take some random text. Now in this case, the random text is our file that might contain some code or some markup. Its job is to produce an abstract syntax tree out of that text. Now an abstract syntax tree, we're going to see what that looks like later on in this episode. But what it is, is it's a tree of different nodes, objects, that actually describe the text in some meaningful way. So if we were to pass a Lua file, we are converting the text that is just Lua into an abstract syntax tree. And for example, the text print hello world could become an abstract syntax tree like function call. And within the function call, we have a function name called print. So we have some parameters, which are a string and the contents of the string are hello world. It allows us to have more insights into the file that we're dealing with. This is great for developers because they don't have to resort to regex, for example, for pattern matching. They can instead consult with Trista, which is much more reliable, but it's also really useful for you as the user because you do actually get better syntax highlighting from Trista. So I think you can see why it's a common misconception that Trista is a better highlighting engine. It's not in of itself a highlighting engine, but we can use the output of of each individual parser to provide better highlights for our files. So I'm about to drop a sort of bombshell on you right now, because if you've ever looked at other people's configurations, or you've talked with friends about NeoVim, you will know that they have the NVIM TreeSitter package. The NVIM TreeSitter package is over here on GitHub, and if you scroll down you can see it's TreeSitter configurations and abstraction layer for NeoVim. And what most people think is that in order to use TreeSitter, you absolutely need this plugin. That this plugin is the TreeSitter core. But this is completely not true. The core of TreeSitter is within NeoVim. It's been there the whole time. And in fact, I can prove it to you right here, right now. So I'm just going to enter NeoVim, not in any specific directory. I'm just going to enter it. I'm going to execute some Lua code. And we can do that using the Lua command. And anything after this is just going to be executed as Lua. And I'm going to run the print function. I'm going to print a very specific value. And this is going to be vim.treeSitter. So inside of the Vim global table, there is a subtable called TreeSitter, which contains the TreeSitter integration itself. If I hit enter, you can see that print shows us this funny thing, table and then an address. This is because the default print function within Lua is not capable of actually displaying contents of tables. That's just a limitation of Lua. Well, it's not a limitation, but Lua wants to be small and embeddable and having a massive print function that would be capable of printing tables yeah, that's a bit overkill. So you might be inclined from the last episode to use vim.notify, but vim.notify won't work either because notify is specifically for displaying notifications. It's just text. But if we want to display some complex output, we need to use vim.print. And vim.prints is a special function, you can read about it in the help pages. For the most part, it works exactly like the regular Lua prints function. However, it's also capable of printing tables. And if we hit enter, well, look at this. This is much more rich output over here. And we can see that vim.treesitter is a table which has a bunch of functions that we can call. So if treesitter is already here, 
what is this thing for then? Well, NeoVim comes with the core installed, but it doesn't actually come with any of the passes installed that we need in order to actually pull meaningful information out of a file. So when people have NVIM TreeSitter installed, it's not because they are adding TreeSitter support into NeoVim, it's just that they are making it easy to install passes for NeoVim's TreeSitter. So our job now in this episode is going to be to install NVIM TreeSitter to set it up and also to peek behind the curtain, look behind the scenes, see how these passes work, how, you know, NeoVim is capable of interacting with them. And hopefully at the end of this video, uh, you're going to leave with a very big understanding of what TreeSitter is and also what it isn't. So naturally we need to CD into our configuration directory because we're going to be modifying the config. And we are going to modify the plugins.lua file because we want to change our plugins. All right, and we want to install a new plugin. So make sure you have a comma at the end of this table definition. And we're going to create a new table and we are going to tell Lazy that we would like to install a new plugin and that plugin's name is nvim treesitter slash nvim treesitter and we're going to leave it as is for now. The installation process doesn't say anything about running a setup function or anything like that so we don't have to worry about it for now. So we're going to save and quit and when we re-enter Lazy is going to realize oh I don't have nvim treesitter installed so I'm going to install it. And indeed, that is what it is doing. We can see it has successfully installed. Fantastic. It's now going to quit out of this window with colon Q. And what changed? Well, nothing really changed. And that's because we now actually need to install some passes. We're currently in a Lua file. So if we want to see any changes or any live feedback, we'd need to install the Lua parser. By installing Envim Treesitter, we have now gained access to a suite of new commands. And this set of commands, this family of commands is prefixed by TS or Treesitter for short. Not to be confused with TypeScript, um, I know, I know. So if we hit tab, we can see every single possible command. Now we're interested in the TS install command. Now if you hit tab over here, you will see the completion for almost every single programming language in existence. I am not joking, there are so many parsers that exist, but we are interested in installing the Lua parser because we want to convert this essentially blob of text. I mean, to our eyes, it looks structured, but to a computer, this is just text. We want to use a parser to convert to an abstract syntax tree. And here we can see the TreeSitter parser for Lua has been installed. Great success, but still nothing has changed, right? I don't see any difference. So now it's time that we peek behind the curtain a little bit and we see what this parser is doing behind the scenes. First, we need to engage the parser because it's not going to automatically engage every time. If you run the edit command, usually the edit command is used to open a new file. Like you can provide a path over here and it's going to open that file. But if you run it without parameters, it's going to refresh the current file. And if you hit that, yet again, it looks like nothing has changed, but we have now engaged the parser and it's read our entire file and passed it. I can already hear you say, okay dude, magical abstract syntax trees that we can't even see but that we can interact with magically? Yeah, okay. I assure you, it's not a conspiracy theory because we can in fact see the abstract syntax tree within NeoVim and we can do this using an inbuilt command that has been here also the whole time. And that command name, it's inspect tree. And if you hit enter, wowee. So on the left hand side, this is what our eyes see. And this is also what NeoVim sees. This is just text. However, on the right hand side, this is the output of the Lua parser that we just downloaded earlier. And you can see it's a tree because you can have nested objects and objects can be within objects, which can be within objects and so on. And this abstract syntax tree is constructed of nodes and each node has a name. And that name is always enclosed within regular brackets. Now, what's very useful is if you click on a node within this window, it will highlight the corresponding text that the node belongs to on the left. So I think now you can see what I mean by quote unquote, more structured data over just text. For example, we know that this whole highlighted section is a comment and this highlighted section is the actual content of the comment itself. And this is really cool, isn't it? You can also click on this buffer. And when you do that, it's going to show you the corresponding node on the right hand side. So this is an if statement with a condition, with an operand, a function call, this is the name of the function, and then you've got the individual identifiers, and then you've got the arguments. So I provided an example of a Prince Hello World earlier. So let's see what that looks like according to the parser. According to the parser, this is a function call with a name, which is an identifier. This here is called a field. It's some extra information about the node itself, because just identifier on its own isn't particularly useful, but it's a name that just happens to be an identifier. And then inside we have arguments, and in that argument, we have a string whose content 
is this. Isn't that really cool? This is Tresita at its core. And this is precisely why it's so powerful as well. Because instead of having to deal with text, developers can instead deal with this structure. And they don't have to care about what the text actually is because they have the entire text annotated and explained to them almost using this abstract syntax tree. So now that we have this information out of the way, let's see how we can leverage Treesitter to get much better syntax highlighting. Right now, the default syntax highlighting is based on some very simple rules. For example, if you encounter the word local, then highlight it as local. If you encounter an equal sign, then highlight it this color. But as you can imagine with a complex syntax tree, like the one you just saw, you could have some pretty damn good results if you were to use that tree syntax highlighting. And as it turns out, Envim Tree Sitter does that. Apart from providing us with parsers, it also provides us with something called queries. You can think of them as pattern matching over the syntax tree. And we can see some examples to see what this looks like. So I'm going to scroll down until I find Lua. And here we go, here's Lua. And there are many scheme files over here which define different aspects of Envim Tree Sitter. For example, we have special indenting logic, injections, locals. We're interested in highlights, however. And as you can see, this is very simple pattern matching over some nodes and it's assigning them a highlight group. So for instance, whenever we encounter a node that's called break statement, we are going to highlight that as a keyword. Whenever inside of a while statement, we have the keywords while, do, and end, we are going to highlight that as a repeat. And this is where it's so powerful. Instead of dealing with text, we're dealing with these discrete objects and we can assign highlight groups to those things. Now, an interesting thing is, we, this is a highlight group called at condition within NeoVim, we can actually see what that is. If we run the highlights commands, we can do at conditional. And if we hit enter, we can see that it is a actual highlight group. It's a physical highlight group. This is its color and it links to the conditional highlight group, which we can actually follow the chain and we can do highlight conditional. High is a shorthand for highlights. And we can see that that in turn links to statements and then statement is the thing that actually defines the colors for this specific highlight group. So we saw that Envim Tree Sitter comes with these queries, so why don't we see much better syntax highlighting in a file over here? We should be. Well, Tree Sitter comes with everything disabled by default. We are going to have to enable those in our configuration, but we can temporarily enable each individual feature using the TS buff enable command. This is going to enable a specific feature for the current buffer. And if I tap complete, we can see there are a few that we can enable. We can enable custom indenting, highlighting, or incremental selection. I never touched on indenting, by the way. TreeSitter allows the auto indenter. You know, remember in the last video, I showed you you can press the equals sign twice to indent the current line. Yeah, we can use TreeSitter to figure out how far we should indent things. And that's also really helpful, but we're interested in enabling the highlighting. And when you hit enter, oh wow, take a look at that. Isn't that so much better? Than beforehand. So we're now using the syntax tree to highlight different parts of this buffer. And you can immediately see it's so much more rich. It now understands that this is a function, that this is a subtable, and this is a global variable. It's capable of inferring these things from the syntax tree. Isn't this awesome? But remember, this command enabled it only temporarily. If we were to re-enter the file, it's gone again. But now we have this bland looking code left over. So we want to keep it forever. So over here on the readme of Envim Treesitter, we can see there is a module section. And in here, you can see that each module provides a distinct Treesitter based feature such as highlighting, indentation, or folding. And it shows us this big code snippet over here that we can use. We are going to copy this whole code snippet, but I'm going to delete most of the parts of this. So you don't need to do any copying. You're just going to have to follow along with what I'm doing. So as per the previous episode, we want to create a config callback. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place brackets around this. I'm also going to replace the single quotation marks with double quotation marks. It makes no difference in Lua if you use single or double quotation marks, as long as you're consistent with it. So for example, you can't have a single opening uh, quotation mark and then a double quotation mark to end it. I just prefer the double quotation mark standard. It, I just feel it's nicer to look at. And we're also going to put uh, some brackets around here and we're gonna delete most of this garbage, which we do not need. So after the cleanup, this is what we're left with. We are accessing nvimtreesitter.configs. So we're pulling in nvimtreesitter, but we're specifically pulling in the configs table. And then we're running the setup function with some parameters. Now here we're providing an ensure installed table. This is a list of parsers that we want to have installed. Now nvimtreesitter states explicitly that you should always have these five installed. This is their recommendation because these are commonly used throughout the entirety of your NeoVim experience. So you want to have these active. 
Then we also set auto install to true. And what this is going to do is if tree sitter doesn't find any of these passes, it's going to go ahead and install them automatically. And then what we're doing is we're enabling the highlight module, which is going to permanently enable the beautiful syntax highlighting that we just temporarily enabled earlier. Now I'm going to save and quit. And once we re-enter, first of all, syntax highlighting is active. Second of all, tree sitter has kicked in and installed four out of four passes. Now we can see the whole output by running messages and you can see that it was downloading trees to C, Vim, Vimdoc, Query and it extracted all of those and successfully installed them all. And this is it. Now if you're using different programming languages, for example you're a C++ user or maybe you're a Rust programmer, if you go over to the readme and you scroll down there is a supported languages list which is going to list all of the languages that are available. You just find the name of your favorite language and then in this ensure installed table you just add it. So for example if I wanted Rust as well I could just write Rust on the end, save, quit, re-enter NeoVim and it's going to compile and install the Treesita Rust parser. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Treesita. Right now we just enabled highlighting but there is so much more to see and uncover so in the next episode we are going to look at some different plugins that use Treesita to really supercharge our workflows, make the editing experience so much better. Specifically in the next episode we are going to look at this thing called incremental selection and that's going to allow us to use Vim motions to select specific parts of our code. So for example we could say that we would like to change the contents of the current function. The incremental selection module is going to use TreeSitter to figure out where the current function we're in begins and where it ends and it's going to trim all of the content there and it's going to allow us to edit it. So much exciting stuff to come. Hopefully you now understand what TreeSitter is and exactly how it works and if anybody ever tells you that TreeSitter is a better highlighting engine you can now laugh in their face and send them this video. Hope you enjoyed and as always I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!